4.13. Google and Gallup teamed up to survey a random sample of 1,673 U.S. students in grades 7 to 12. One of the questions was, how confident are you that you could learn computer science if you wanted to? Overall, 54% of students said they were very confident. Okay, part A, identify the population and the sample. All right, so the population is all U.S. students in grades 7 to 12. And the sample is the 1,673 U.S. students in grades 7 to 12. Part B, explain why it was better to randomly select the students rather than putting the survey question on a website and inviting students to answer the question. All right, well, that suggestion would be a voluntary response sample. Which would almost certainly lead to bias. Now think about it, if the question is put on a website, then the only type of students who are gonna see the question are those who have access to computers, access to the internet, which in this case, if they have a computer and internet access, they might be more inclined to, to wanna learn computer science than a student in maybe a very rural part of the country who doesn't even have a computer or internet access, right? Um, so yeah, I think that this would, would lead to an overestimate, um, an overestimate of the percent of students, of all students who would want to learn or who think they could learn computer science, um, which would lead to bias, um, slash overestimate. the true percent of students who think they can computer comp sci. Right. Um, and again, this is because the survey is online, so you gotta have a computer in the first place. And probably the ones who voluntarily respond are going to be the ones interested in computer science. <clears throat> okay. um, since mostly those interested will be the ones responding. Right, part C, do you expect that the percent of all U.S. students in grades 7 to 12 who would say very confident is exactly 54%? Explain your answer. Okay, so no, I don't. Uh, in fact, this 54% is just an estimate from one sample. Um, if we took another sample, it would more than likely produce a completely different estimate. Okay, 54%. Uh, is just an estimate from one sample. And another sample would almost certainly produce a different estimate.
And this is what we call sampling variability, right? The, the result or estimate we get from one sample to the next is going to be different because the second sample, although it might have 1,673 students, is not going to have the same 1,673 students. So it'll be a different, uh, a different uh, collection, a different subset of students with different opinions. Okay? Um, so samples only give hopefully good estimates or close estimates, but we never expect them to match the truth. So an estimate is not the same as the truth. Okay. Now, if the sampling has been done properly, then we expect that estimate to be close to the truth, though. All right, um, let's move on to part D. Uh, the report also broke the results down by gender. For this question, 62% of males and 48% of females said they were very confident. Which of the three estimates, 54, 62, or 48, do you expect is closest to the value it is trying to estimate? Explain your answer. Well, what we're trying to estimate is the percent of all students, males and females, that would be very confident. Okay, so for that reason, the estimate that comes from both males and females would be the best estimate. Okay, So not the 62, because that only is looking at males, and we know our population is more than just males. Okay, Not the 48%, because that estimate came from just females, and we know that our population is more than just females. Um, so it would have to be the, the 54%. right? That came from the sample that contained both males and females. So 54% is the best estimate since it came from a sample that is representative of the population. An all-male sample isn't representative of the population, and neither is an all-female sample. 